Fire a blender and add a plane. Then, scale the plane along the X and Y axes. You can press 7 on your numpad to go to the top view. Now, add a material to the plane and name it Cobblestone. We can now head over to the shading viewport, where we're going to create this stylized cobblestone as a procedural texture. We don't need all the parameters of the principled BSDF shader for our procedural texture, so let's delete it, and instead, using the Add menu, let's drop in a Texture Coordinate node, a Voronoi Texture node, a Math node, a Color Ramp node, and finally, Blender's Glossy Shader node. Since our object is along the XY plane, it's best to set the Voronoi texture to 2D. This will give cleaner lines for our procedural texture. Also, make sure to select the Smooth F1 option from the drop-down list. The distance output of the Voronoi texture is then passed on to the Math node, which is then raised to the power of 3. The Color Ramp node uses the output of the Math node to select a color, and then sends it over to Blender's Glossy Shader. To give the cobblestones a stylized look, let's add some saturated colors. This branch of shader nodes is part of the procedural texture that will eventually become the bumps of our cobblestones. Now, to separate the stones of the procedural texture, let's add two more Voronoi texture nodes, a math node, a map range node, along with another math node. For the top Voronoi texture, select 2D and leave the calculation as F1. Then, for the middle Voronoi texture, use 2D and select Smooth F1 from the drop-down. Keep in mind that it's important that the scale and randomness of the top and middle Voronoi textures are exactly the same. The distance output of these two Voronoi textures are then subtracted from each other. The result of the subtraction is a very small number. That's why we're using the Map Range node to remap it to a value between 1 and 0. The operation of the third math node is set to Multiply Add. This operation combines its two inputs by multiplying the first value by a given factor and then adding it to the second value. The result of this combination is then passed on to the Color Ramp node. Our procedural texture now looks like a stylized cobblestone. However, we can make it look even better by applying a bump map. To do this, let's add a bump node. This bump node takes its height value from the previous math node. It then converts the height values to normal vectors and passes them to the normal input of Blender's glossy shader. Aside from being able to extend infinitely without repeating themselves, the other advantage of procedural textures is that they always produce a crisp image, regardless of how close or far the camera is from the texture. If you want to learn more about procedurally generated textures, consider watching these other videos. As for this one, thank you for watching, and until next time, take care.